We are here at the vestry of the Charismatic Evangelistic Ministry where the sold out 2018 will be taking place. As we walked in here, we saw that rehearsals were just ended and uh, William McDowell and his team are going to rest a while before they come back for the deal itself later in the day. So I'll start the conversation actually with uh, uh, one of the members, actually I hear is the founder of the sold out, uh, Rafael Entry, and uh, he's going to tell us what this evening is all about. But before we have a conversation with American gospel star, William McDowell. Hello, Rich, uh, Raphael. Hello. So this evening, we have sold out to this edition. And um, just give us a brief idea of what we are expecting this evening. Okay, so um, sold out um, 2018 is, is themed worship like never before. So we're looking at an experience that is uncommon. We're looking at an experience that will birth a revival. A revival of the love of Jesus, a revival of, you know, if you like, um, people getting back to the consciousness of the presence of God, and, and many more things. In fact, yesterday, after the, the um, unlimited edition, we had testimonies, for instance, and we believe that tonight we're going to have many more testimonies to come. Mm. Great. So if you are still contemplating on coming, here's a reason you should come. American gospel star, William McDowell, he's not new to Ghana, but you're welcome again. I'm sure you're familiar with the term Akwaba. Akwaba. Yes. <laughs> so what do you say to that? No one told me what to say. I'm just saying thank you. Okay, so that's it, but it's just that like you have to say Medasi. Medasi, that's right. I remember now. Okay. I remember now, yes. Okay, so uh, welcome. We are preparing. I see you and your team are all geared up for this evening. Yes, ma'am. Mm. So worship is your thing, and I'm sure that's what you're going to be giving us this evening. Mm. What's going to be different from what people have seen you do every time you come to Ghana? Every time we worship, God is a fresh time of worship. Um, if we are offering him the same thing that we've always offered him, it's not fresh. And so ultimately, everything that we do is, is responding to what he's doing in the atmosphere, responding to what he's doing in the room. And so I think one of the most important things for everyone to understand, and I try to say this as often as I can, um, whenever you come to a place, um, if you're coming to see the person, um, you're going to be disappointed when it comes to worship. If you're coming to have an encounter with God and to open up your heart, at some point, the goal is that we become invisible so that people have an, an encounter with the Lord. Um, so what makes it different is that it's a new day. Uh, he's worthy to be praised every single day. And so it's not about the different songs, the different style, or the different presentation. It's about the way that we offer our hearts to God. And we are believing, uh, just like the man of God said here, we are believing uh, for the type of outpouring that leads to revival. Um, that is the global word that, that is that's on the hearts of, of men and women of God across the world um, because this is the opportunity that we have within this generation to see something uh, that will literally be life-changing. So I'm believing uh, that we will have a life-changing encounter with God. Great. And there must be something about Ghana that keeps letting you come back. You know, this is like the third time third you're time. in Ghana. What's about this country for you? Um, there's something special about the people, uh, the way that the people pursue God, um, the reputation of, of what uh, the Ghanaian reputation uh, around the world, even in the United States, is a good reputation. Mm -hmm. And so it is a good thing to be here with great people. So the people here are wonderful. I'm sure the Ghanaians watching you, when you say it's a good reputation, it is a what, what actually do you hear about us? Or what did you, have you noticed <laughs> about Ghana? Well, hospitable. Hmm. Um, hospitality is, is one of the keys. Um, people that are genuine. Um, and so really, um, you, you wish that would be the, the testimony of everyone, uh, but it, it does have that testimony here for Ghana. I saw uh, our award-winning gospel musician, uh, Joe Metal, on the stage with you. Uh, are you performing together? Is it with you as a friend? Uh, nothing's planned at the moment, but he, he's a great man of God and, and, and has always been so hospitable to us every time we're here. I uh, actually uh, taught us a song the first time we were here, mm -hmm. uh, a Ghanaian song as well. And so, do you remember I, the song? I do. Okay. <laughs> okay. After you're answering, you sing that song, Ellie, let's hear you. Uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you try? Because I might mess it up. It's, okay. been, a, it's been a while. So, mm -hmm. but, but I remember him specifically for that and his hospitality, making sure that we felt welcome when we were here. And so I've always remembered remembered him and we've tried to stay in touch every time we're here. Great. So that's Joe Metal. Who yeah. else do you know here in Ghana who's a gospel musician? Oh, you put me on the spot <laughs> now. <laughs> Don't do that to me because if I forget somebody, they'll be mad. <laughs> so we won't Angelo do that. I'm you. Uh, you know a few others. I, I'm going to I'm gonna stick with Joe. How about that? Okay. That's fine. <laughs> yes. You're sticking with Joe. That's yes. fine. But I know that you're an author as well. 
Yes. Is it, is it called It's Happening? It's Happening. Okay, so I got it right. You got so, it right. A generation is crying out and heaven is responding. We just uh, released that book in the United States. It'll be uh, all over the world. Well, really, you can get it through Amazon uh, now all over the world. I know that people have, uh, but it's going to be released in uh, the continent of Africa as well. Um, I'm excited about people reading this because there's been a significant move of God that's taking place in the earth. Um, there's been a move of God that's been taking place in a church that we planted four years ago. I pastor a church in Orlando, Florida. Um, God's been moving in a significant way there. There's been an outpouring of the Spirit of God. Um, it's the answer uh, to a 20-year cry of mine. Um, really, it's it's been, uh, and I shared this earlier, um, it's, it's been like finding the pearl of great price, willing to sell all the other pearls in order to be there. I am... I travel less now. I say no. So I was going to ask how you are able to pastor mm -hmm. and still do your traveling ministry and all that. I travel less. Mm. Um, I say no to about 90% of the invitations that come now. lucky. Not lucky, just God, God's grace opened, opened up the door for this. But I am, I am grateful for what the Lord is doing in our home. Um, I, I started crying out to God for a specific move of God about 20 years ago, not knowing that he was going to answer that cry on May 22nd, 2016, when he walked into the room and everything changed for us. Uh, we've seen a significant outpouring of the Spirit of God, significant miracles that have taken place, um, and, and people really growing in their hunger for God. And specifically in America, that's a, that's a, uh, uh, a special thing to happen because of the spiritual apathy uh, that exists in, uh, among Christians in America. Uh, and so God's really um, awakening something and, and we had to write about it. And so the Lord has really created and opened up an opportunity for us to write about it. And I'm grateful to be able to spread this message. And, and the point of it is to awaken that same desire uh, to, to place us in the same posture uh, so that we can experience that ourselves all over the world. I realized that uh, when I was reading through your profile that you were being mentored by Ron Kenoli. He's been to Ghana before. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm wondering, what does mentoring mean to you when it comes to ministry? Because a lot of people would you know, wake up and then they become ministers overnight. Mm -hmm. And What does mentoring mean to you as a minister? Well, I, I think I've learned over the course of time that, that what people do uh, is they they want to trace your lineage to someone. Uh, however, um, and this is not disrespect to Dr. Cannoli whatsoever, but the greatest mentor in my life has been the Holy Spirit. Um, I think that is vital. He gets less credit for the development of people than anyone on earth uh, because everyone uh, who has been um, mentored by the Holy Spirit goes through pain. Everyone who's been mentored by the Holy Spirit goes through isolation. Everyone who's been mentored by the Holy Spirit goes through all of these things as a, as a result of preparation so that whenever uh, he decides to promote you that you're ready for the platform. Uh, it was uh, a famous author that once said it's doubtful that God will ever use someone that he's not first bruised. He crushes people first. Uh, and so um, I think the thing about mentoring that everyone needs to understand is there are two types. There's the mentors and there's tour mentors, but both of them teach you. Uh, and, and the Holy Spirit sets all of these things up in your life in order to teach you, to grow you, to mature you. Uh, and so for me, um, it, it's first vital because you can be mentored from a distance or you can be mentored up close. But the most important mentor in your life is going to be the Spirit of God. Uh, if you don't have him teaching you, you have nothing, no matter what you've learned from another person. One of the biggest songs I give myself away. Mm -hmm. Very big song. And I'm grateful for this opportunity because I get to ask, you know, what inspired that song? Um, the funny thing is, I think people are looking for a story, um, but what inspired that song is a life of surrender. Um, it, it takes not a moment to write a song, it takes a crushed life to write one. Um, and so ultimately, anything that you write should come out of a place where you've been uh, with God. And, and part of the, the, the I would say that the life message of my heart has been surrender. It's, it's, the, it's the first foundation of the theology of, of worship in general. Uh, and so um, the mechanics of it is we were in a prayer service. So a lot of times what comes out of uh, a moment is actually inspired by a life or a lifestyle or a season. So for me, um, there was a real season where the Lord was dealing with me concerning surrender, uh, concerning my yes. Uh, yes is what I believe is it ever unfolding word. Uh, your yes is a continual thing that, that, that agrees with the plan of God uh, for your life. And so for me, um, the, the interesting part was we were in a prayer service uh, and it came spontaneously uh, in a prayer service. We weren't even going to record the song, actually. Um, so it came in a prayer service, but, but the ultimate answer is it came out of a life of surrender. Hmm, beautiful. 
last question because I know you had to go. And um, you were nominated for the Grammys, mm -hmm. and uh, you didn't pick up the award, but uh, that's a good thing, you know. What does awards mean? Because it's a big deal for a lot of people mm -hmm. in the ministry, but what does awards mean to you? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> it means absolutely nothing. Um, it, it means on the earth that people are recognizing, you know, your impact at some level. Um, but it means nothing because you can get an award and live a life that doesn't please the Lord. Ultimately, what we do is we work for heavenly rewards. Uh, that in the end, that he says, well done. Because at what an award is on the earth is nothing but a trophy. Uh, so it means absolutely nothing. Um, it, in the moment, it feels good to be recognized by your peers, but at the end of the day, it means absolutely nothing. They're in my house, and I don't look at them every day. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And if anything were to happen, I couldn't sell them to, to save my life. Uh, and so ultimately, what, what we go for, what we live for, is to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. That's a heavenly reward that's much greater than anything on the earth. I'm sure it's going to be a, a fantastic evening with you for worshipers you know, who've loved your song. From 2009, we saw one in 2012, that was another album, and then 2016. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we are going to have all that, you know, performed this evening. Mm -hmm. I look forward to it. And so, Rafa Lenchi, finally, I give you the final words. Let people know that there's a reason to be here this evening. Sure, there's a reason to be here um, because a lot of preparations have gone into this event. And um, we have no iota of doubt that God is going to visit us. We're going to have more than an encounter as an experience and look forward to that tonight. Definitely so. So if you are home and you haven't had and haven't gotten your ticket yet, you oh. need to be here. Yes. William McDowell, do that to the camera again. Come, come. come. he says, come. Come tonight. come tonight. It will be a great encounter. So I hand over to the Paul's team back in the studio.